everybody, and welcome or welcome back to Cooking It Real. If you're new here, my name is Kathy, and I'm glad you're in the kitchen with me. Today is a very special day because I'm bringing you a very special recipe. Now, it's not that the recipe is all that special, but it's because I'm making this recipe in memory of my dear sister, Karen. It was six years ago that she left us so unexpectedly, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about her and miss her greatly. But what are we gonna make in memory of Karen today? We are gonna make her favorite dessert, carrot cake. She loved carrot cake. In fact, she loved carrot cake so much that she made carrot cake her screen name, her email name. Girl was all about carrot cake. So today, I'm gonna bring you carrot cake in memory of my baby sister, Karen. Of course, the star of our show is carrot. And this is three cups of shredded carrot. Uh, it's best to use fresh carrot and shred it yourself. It's probably about four or five carrots, depending on their size. I shredded them up in my food processor. I also have some all-purpose flour, four eggs, some white sugar, brown sugar, vegetable oil, I've got some Greek yogurt, some chopped pecans that I lightly toasted, and because they were pecan halves, I saved about a dozen pretty ones to decorate. I've got four eggs, I got some vanilla extract, and then my seasonings. I have salt, nutmeg, clove, cinnamon, and baking soda. Let's put it all together. The first thing you want to do when you're getting ready to bake a cake is to prepare your pans and preheat your oven. I have here two nine inch cake pans that I have greased with butter along the edges and on the bottom and I put a piece of parchment um, on the bottom. What I did was I took a piece of parchment paper and I put my pan on it and I traced around the pan and cut out the circle and then put it into the pan. This recipe was written for three six inch cake pans or two eight inch cake pans. Well, I don't have six, I don't have eight, but I got nine. So what I did was I asked my engineer husband to do a calculation for me and he came up with, we need a third more of everything. So I'm gonna give you the amounts to make two nine inch round cake layers. Okay, we're gonna do this old school and we're gonna follow the recipe exactly today. Who are we talking to? I'm doing it just for Karen. What I have here in this small bowl is two and two thirds cup of flour. And the way that they suggested you measure it is to take a spoon, spoon the flour into your measuring cup and then level it off. So I have two and two thirds cup of all purpose flour. To that, I'm going to add a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon of salt, a generous quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of clove, three teaspoons of cinnamon, and two and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Everybody into the pool. Get in. The thing about a carrot cake is it's a kind of a spice cake. And it makes you think fall because of like the cinnamon and the nutmeg and warm spices like that. But it's really good all year round. This is an excellent cake for any occasion, I will say, but this year I think it'd be perfect for Easter, which is why I'm making it today. That's another thing is that this cake holds up excellently. And that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be making it in advance. All right, let's put that aside and get to our wet ingredients. All right, in a bigger bowl, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix our oil and our sugars. So I have one cup of granulated white sugar and one cup of packed light brown sugar. Get those in there. Give them a little mixy mix. There we go. And I have one and a third cup of vegetable oil. You can use any neutral oil. Uh, you can use um, 
vegetable oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, whatever you like. One and one third cup. Give that a good mix. Pretending I'm, I'm a KitchenAid today. You know, I was the oldest of four girls and Karen, Karen was the baby. And even though we were only five years apart, when we were growing up, it seemed like we were a hundred years apart. But the older we got, the closer we got. And I am so grateful that we had that opportunity to grow close. All right, next we're going to add our four large eggs. Give them a whisk. We also want to add our vanilla. I've got two and a half teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. Add that right in. Okay. And I've got one cup of Greek yogurt. You could use sour cream. Oh, my oven is preheated, so we're right on track. All right. There we go. All right, now let's see. Now we got our dry ingredients. We're going to add them in to our wet ingredients, and let's see if I can do this with a whisk or if I need to get something else. Get in you. Oh, look at that. Get in there. Oh, this smells so good. Mmm, the spices and the vanilla. I don't know if Karen was a big uh, baker of carrot cake, to tell you the honest truth. I know she loved it. I know she love to order it. I know she, my dad would make it for her for all the family occasions where my dad would do a big bake off. He would always make carrot cake for Karen. Oh, that looked good. Okay. Now I'm going to switch over to a spatula and I'm going to fold in my three cups of shredded carrots. And like I said before, uh, it's best not to buy the bagged shredded carrots because they are like dry as dust. And this is a very important moisture element to your cake. So you want your three cups of shredded carrots. You don't have to do it in a food processor. You could easily do it on a box grater. That's what you have going. And this is, I think this is a little more than one cup of nuts. Let me get my handy dandy half cup measuring cup and we'll see. That's a half. No, that's about a cup. Eh, it works. I measure with my heart. And we're just going to fold this in. If you do, you don't have to toast your nuts. You don't even have to add nuts. You could add walnuts. That's kind of more traditional. But um, pecans is what I have. And I bet you Karen wouldn't mind pecans. I've been known to put raisins in carrot cake, but today I'm just doing it. I'm doing a standard, the basic. Okay, that's nice. All right, so that's all mixed. How long did that take? Not long at all. Okay, so I'm gonna try to divide this batter between the two pans. Let's see how I do. Some for you. Some for you. Some more for you. Now I'm going to have to put this down and look at it because I can't see it. What we got here. This one needs more for sure. Now 
now they're about even and I just got a little bit more I'm going to just try to divvy it up nice and even and I don't think I mentioned but we're going to be frosting this cake with the cream cheese frosting another excellent part of carrot cake the frosting all right good all right here we go so i'm gonna give that a quick tap get some air bubbles out and i'm going to put this in the center of my 350 degree oven i'm going to bake it for about 30 to 35 minutes i'm going to start checking it at 30 it might go a little more might go a little less um depending uh, every oven is different while the cake is baking let's get making our frosting i told you before that this is a cake i'm baking in advance so the cake after it cools is going to spend the night in the fridge and so is the frosting so let's get it made now while the cake is baking the ingredients are very simple i've got a cup of butter which is two sticks I've got 16 ounces of Philly full fat cream cheese, which is two packages. I've got a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, and I'm gonna need five cups of powdered sugar. Powdered sugar is sometimes called icing sugar, confectioner sugar, even 10X sugar, but I need five cups of this. And I'm gonna do it in the mixer. Got my two blocks of cream cheese. 16 ounces in total. My two sticks of butter. One cup in total. I'm going to put on my paddle attachment and cream those together. They're both at room temperature. Oh, that looks beautiful. Oh. Light and fluffy. Right. Scrape down the sides. Give it one more mix. Then we're going to start adding the powdered sugar one cup at a time. Put my one cup powdered sugar. Start slow. down it's number two three Number four. Number five. So that's good. Now we just mix in our vanilla. That'll be that. Oh, then we'll have to have a taste for sure. Just to make sure. What would Karen do? Should grab a spoon. All right. That's my little tiny half teaspoon. We're just going to get that all mixed together. And voila, it is done. Take this off. Look at 
Look at how smooth and delicious that looks. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to have more frosting than I need, but nothing wrong with that. We'll see. Dallin, you want to lick the beater? Should I say the beta? Lick the beta, Dallin. Okay, these have baked for a total of 40 minutes, and I'm going to use the toothpick test. Put it down, see if it comes out looking dry. 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 Excellent. So I'm going to leave these here to cool on this rack for 15 minutes, after which time we're going to go around the edge with a knife. We're going to turn them out onto this rack and let them cool absolutely completely then when they're totally cool i'm going to leave them for a couple of hours at least i'm going to wrap them up in plastic they're going to go in the fridge with the frosting until tomorrow okay guys i'm back it's the next day these guys have spent the night in the fridge and now it's time to frost. I took my frosting out about 30 minutes ago to give it just a little chance to warm up, but the cake rounds are just out of the fridge, nice and cold. I'm gonna be putting my cake on a dinner plate. This is a large size dinner plate, one of my favorite turquoise Fiesta Ware plates. Um, but if you happen to be bringing your cake to a gathering or to work or something like that, and you really don't, want to risk your plate going missing uh, you might stop like at the dollar store or something like that and you can get these type of plates very inexpensively this is one that i have it's really big for the cake i'll show you it's almost too big but you could use it there are smaller ones so i would recommend if you don't want to um, bring one of your precious dinner plates just go to the store get yourself something cheap like this problem solved okay now I'm gonna prepare my plate for the cake to be frosted uh, I took some these are 9 by 13 pieces of parchment to cut them in half and I'm just gonna place them around the edges so that we can frost and not make a mess and then when we take these papers out at the end, everything looks nice and pretty and clean, just like so. If you don't, don't have parchment, <laughs> all right, let's try to get the, the kinks out here. If you don't have parchment, you can use wax paper. You can use, uh, you can use printer paper, you know, just regular white copy paper, eight and a half by 11. Just, um, just cut some strips, just so you have some under the cake and a little bit of overhang. All right, let's unwrap one of these. These turned out so well, I'm very happy. I like the height of the layer. I'm so glad that we, that I did, that I used Will's calculation and made it one third more than the original recipe. You have an eight inch pan, you can make one third less. Alrighty. Now, let me see, where's my frosting? I'm going to just put a little dab right in the center. This is like an anchor. There you go. All right, get you tucked in, get in there, and you tucked in. Come on. There we go. There. Press that down just a little bit and we're good to go. Make sure we're centered. Perfect. One of these party plate, party tray things is that they're flat. This dinner plate has a bit of a curve to it on the edges so my cake is not sitting perfectly flat. But hey, we're cooking it real. It doesn't really bother me. I'm cool with it. So we're just going to go with it. All right. Now let's start to get to frosting. Now I have a butter knife. I can use that. I have all kinds of cake spatulas, offset spatulas, frosting spatulas. I don't know. Well, yes, I do know where I got these. 
I got these from my friend Kirsten, who taught cooking at a high school in Maryland. She sent them to me. Um, I think I will, I think I will use this one today, but you can just use a butter knife. Now, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to put some frosting in the middle. And if this is too cold, we might have to wait just a little bit. It's very cold. I snitched the taste of this frosting, by the way. Good. Delicious. Yeah. I think I'm going to wait just a few minutes because this is so stiff that it's picking up all the crumb. All right. Let's take a quick break. All right. So what I did was I took a smaller bowl and I put some of the frosting in and I just gave it like a good mixy, mixy, mix. Try to get it softened up just a little bit more. And I think this is going to work great for the center. So let's just glob that on there. I haven't decided, and I'm just cooking it real, so I'm telling you this now, how I want to do this. Do I want to frost the sides, or do I want to just leave the sides plain and frost the center really thickly and the top? That would certainly be the easiest thing to do, and I just might do that. And if you are doing that, then you really don't need to have the papers. You know, I might do this because the frosting is so rich that you don't have to have a ton of it. All right, let's get another. I'm going to make it nice and thick in here, though. And maybe I can bring it down. Well, I think you can see. Let's see. I probably got it about a good, a good quarter inch thick. I'm going to take it all the way to the edge and really almost have it be not spilling out, but peeking out. How about that? Oh, this is going to be so easy. Oh, I just made my life so much easier. All right. Quick decision. Cooking it real. Here we go. Nice. And it's okay to have some crumbs on this side because no one's going to see it. You want the top to be perfect, though. If you want, you can definitely frost both sides, uh, in which case I would make this middle um, layer of frosting thinner, thinner than what I'm doing right now. And you would go all around the outsides um, once you put the second layer on very lightly, very thinly. They call that the crumb layer. And what that does it is it seals in all the crumbs that are picked up by the, the frosting. So after you would do that, you would put the cake back in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes or so until that layer got nice and stiff. And then you would come out and redo it like with your final layer. Oh yeah. Okay. That looks good. Maybe I need it a little bit thicker just on this edge. Peeking out, peeking out. Come on and peek out. I want you to peek right here and you to peek right over here. Now, I am not a cake baker very much, nor am I a cake decorator very much, but I like to try different things all the time. So I hope you do too. I think I said this before, but I will say it again because it's time has passed and I can't remember. Uh, this would be a beautiful cake 
to make for a holiday gathering. Right now it's um, towards the end of March and in about a week it'll be Easter Sunday. This is a great dessert for Easter because of the carrot theme, the Easter Bunny carrots, get it? But it's really good any time of year. All right, let's get cake layer number two. Now, sometimes when you bake a cake, you'll have like a uh, one layer or both layers will be a little bit taller in the center, like almost have a mound. If it's a, a big, big mound, you might want to take a, a sharp serrated knife and gently cut that mound off. Or what I learned, and I'm not sure whether my mom taught me this or what, is if you put your bottom layer mound up, put your top layer mound down, and just make sure you have extra frosting uh, around the edges. You would frost it less in the center because the two higher sides are touching. That's just the way she said. All right, now I'm going to put, this time I'm going to put the other side down. Is this my flatter side? This is the side that had the um, parchment when it was in the pan. Oh, yeah, look at that. That is going to be beautiful. Looks like a giant whoopie pie right now, doesn't it? So I stirred up some more frosting to get it, get it going good. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Tastes so good. Oh, darling. You would love this. Just gonna, I'm gonna make it nice and thick up here too. Get some more. You might say that looks awful thick, but you know, if you put it all down the sides and stuff, you're probably getting the same amount of frosting so but you do you right, let's see pushed it to the edge to the edge to the edge there we go pretty oh man that looks so cool. I am loving it. Just a little bit more. I have plenty of frosting left over. Look at that. All right, now I'm gonna get down to eye level and turn this around and see what I think. Oh. I think that looks great. All right, so let's see, what am I gonna do? See, I'm gonna try to first I'm gonna smooth the top off a little bit. There we go. Ooh, is there more over here? being a little nitpicky, I think, for no reason. All right. There. That's beautiful. I'm calling it. Now, you know, there are pecans in this cake. And like I told you, you don't have to add any if you don't want. But what I did, because they were uh, pecan hob, hobs, halves, um, I saved some of the prettiest ones 
to use as decoration. So let's see. I'm going to start at like 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock. And then three o'clock and nine o'clock. Let's see, I'm putting the rounded edge out. Not that it matters. And I think I'll do like two, one, two. Three, four. Now, you know, you can always go to like um, your local craft store will generally have a baking aisle and they'll have like cute little seasonal uh, sugar decorations that you can put in, uh, you know, put on the top or the sides of your cake. Like maybe for Easter, they would have little bunny rabbits or something like that. And, um, this is a broken one. Let's see. Oh, it's not too broken. This one's this one's better. Uh, that you could put in the center. Or if you have edible flowers like pansies, if you have pansies blooming in your yard and they are not sprayed or anything like that, you can you can decorate with those. But I think this looks just beautiful. And yeah, no, I'm just going to leave it just like this. So, Dallin, this one's for you. Now, if you're bringing this cake somewhere, I would advise you to get some toothpicks and stick a couple of toothpicks on the top and drape some plastic wrap over all sides. Keep it in the fridge until you're ready to transport it. And then that will keep the frosting nice and pretty. Now, as much as it pains me, I'm going to cut this cake so I can show it to you and taste it for you. Oh, the sacrifices. Oh. And now it's time to taste. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm. Mm. I wonder if it's Karen's favorite cake. I love it. I love you, Karen. I miss you, darling. I love the pecans in there. It gives just a nice little bit of texture. Of course, you can leave them out. It's a hit. Thanks for joining me today. And I hope to see you next time on Cooking It Real. Bye, everybody.